Hi and welcome to another video. Um, this time we're reviewing a uh, new to me, I don't actually know how long they've been available, but um, Kato Engage Tram. Now this is one of the My Tram uh, models. Um, I've not previously seen one of these, it came up on a, a forum I'm on um, as possibly an alternative um, to the Kato Paw Tram and Centrams that I've seen before. Um, obviously I don't want uh, an engaged tram for engaged street scenes um, but the Paw Tram and Send Tram um, have been a, a useful uh, model for um, narrow gauge modelers because um, we I'll put a photo up of a, of a Send Tram at some point but we take the bogies out of these the power bogies so um, this is one of the tiny little um, powered units from a, a Send Tram with its um, with its control board, you can replace the control board with just a, um, a a small resistor, which makes this thing completely self-contained um, and brilliant for doing kind of small four millimeter scale um, narrow gauge models on nine millimeter gauge track. And in fact, I've used these before. So um, the Allen Keith K12 um, kit I designed uh, uses one of these, which means that the cab is clear and there's lots of uh, lots of modeling potential. Um, so um, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a full Kato tram to show you, but as I say, I'll, I'll stick a picture up. But when you uh, when you dismantle it, you get two of these two of these power burgers. This is one I uh, I picked up recently second hand. Uh, needed some um, slight repairs. Um, it didn't work properly, but I think it was mostly a loose connection and needing the wheels cleaning. Um, but yeah, you get two of these, and that's great. Um, but they've become a lot more expensive over the last couple of years um, when you can find them in this country they're not cheap uh, importing them from abroad obviously has all the problems of tax and shipping and everything else um, so while they're really really useful um, they're becoming a little prohibitively expensive if the th first thing you want to do is pull the tram apart throw away all the body plastic uh, just for the motor bogies um, so when I saw this my tram come up on a, a forum post and somebody was saying did we know anything about it was it a possible replacement for um, the poor tram so and send tram so I had a hunt around and I managed to find one um, on eBay uh, for a lot less than the the kind of suggested RRP um, prices on these things varies uh, probably at the moment filming this you you can definitely find them for a hundred quid under a hundred pounds um, prices varied from about 80 to 100 depending on postage and shipping and everything else um, I did see some advertised for uh, 40 pounds from um, Plaza Japan but obviously you'd then need to do shipping and any uh, customs and VAT and stuff that may end up on top and I, I haven't worked out how how much cheaper those would be but um, I plonked for this one which I actually got as I say this was the cheapest one I could when I could find and was actually a really good deal um, and I thought, well, even if it turns out to be no use, as long as I'm careful with it, um, then I might be able to sell it on. So let's have a look. Let's do a full unboxing and we'll see see how we go. So um, first up, um, the idea about these my trams is that they're plain coloured. Um, so you can kind of go ahead and um, detail them yourself if you wanted to. So they come in in this red one or there's also a blue version. Um, they're structured differently uh, to the Portrum and Centrum. So that's the Portrum and Centrum have essentially two units that joint in the middle. Uh, it's roughly the same length, but as I say, it's a front and back and they joint in the middle. Um, and that means that the power bogies on them actually rotate slightly underneath uh, underneath the tram itself. Whereas this is in is in three, uh, three pieces, articulates quite nicely. Um, has the lifting pantograph. To, to my eye, that looks to be identical to the part on the on the Portrum and Centrum models. Um, yeah, and as I say, you can see completely clear um, through, so you can easily get the bodies off, and we'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute, um, to fit people if you want to. Um, there's no lighting in the inside of the carriages on these. That appears to be an optional extra. Uh, there's details in the instructions of how to fit uh, a little circuit board um, that powers the lights. Um, the circuit, looking at the instructions for fitting that, it doesn't look like it actually is the lights themselves, just the circuit board. So I don't know whether it's just that the electronics are, are missing or what. Um, 
so I have run this some down some track and I will um, add some video um, overlaid as we're as we're talking it, it settles it shuttles backwards and forwards uh, really nicely uh, one thing I did notice is that it does have some lights so it has lights either end here and here uh, and they're directional so white going forwards uh, red going backwards and again I'll see if I can get uh, a piece of video up for that uh, but as you can see it's it, you know if you wanted to model a tram and a street scene um, in Engage it's a really nice model there's plenty of you know there's enough detail inside it uh, to pass muster and you could easily as I say um, fit fit people in here uh, and have a, a really nice tram model um, but as I say I wanted it to see whether it would replace the the use of a port or centrum for access to the bogies now um, as soon as you start looking at this I'm a little skeptical um, yes there are two independent bogies and given how it flexes um, and that there's nothing obvious inside this middle section I'm assuming that each one is powered independently but they're not going to be as narrow even if they're useful as the Portram and Centram bogies because you can see that there's plastic on the outside of the wheels whereas on the um, on the Portram ones the wheels are almost the widest part of the of the bogey um, whereas here there's obviously plastic outside and it, it's really difficult to see I don't know if you can tell on the camera but it looks to me as if there's a pickup strip um, outside the wheels inside the plastic uh, meaning that you can't just cut this out of plastic away to get a smaller uh, a smaller bogey but we'll, we'll, we'll do a bit of a tear down and we'll, we'll see so as I say I'm going to take this quite slowly because I'm hoping I can put it back together again and, and then probably um, and sell the model on if I don't need the bogies. Um, spoiler, I don't need the bogies, uh, but we'll, we'll see why in a minute. So disassembly is quite easy. Essentially, you just pull gently and the units unclip. So you can see there's a there's this little clip that also has two little uh, metal pins um, to transfer power. So obviously, you know, the bogies pick up the power, but this is transferring it to this top section for here for, for the lights, as I, as I say, I assume. Um, but it's difficult to tell. Uh, the other end comes off in exactly the same way, so um, I don't need to do both. Um, so yeah, so fitting the lights, apparently this bottom piece here, show not to lose all the bits, this bottom piece here comes off and what you do is you slot a circuit board into this hole here that has some pins which go into one of these slots um, up to the top and I assume um, that connects to the stuff that's going on in here where the mounting the two arms of the mounting piece go on and as you can see the pin at the top which is a bit clearer if I can get this to come off um, is in two halves if I can get the camera to focus yeah so you see the pin is in two halves um, and I assume that that's so that when it clips back on um, and it clips on underneath but you can see the effect that essentially um, each side of that is is power um, to do the to do the transfer. So there's something obviously with this little circuit board that transfers the power up here, um, allowing it to cross over and do the lights. Um, yeah, I'm actually wondering whether this piece of clear plastic is the light, and it's just some kind of um, not fiber optic, but can you know kind of light display piece. Um, so I don't know what I'm assuming just for cost they've not. Not bothered with that um, that circuit board in the in the default option. Anyway, um, but as you can tell, as the rest of this chassis, apart from the, the wheel, the the bogey and the outside is cast, so it's actually got some nice weight to it, which would be good. Now, as I say, I'm going to try and take this apart without breaking it. Um, essentially, just as with the K2 and the Protron, what you have to do essentially is flex the plastic and push it. Um, push it away from the bogies and you can get the bogey to kind of pop out there we go um, you have to be careful that the the glass that well the plastic windows um, don't pop out the front windscreen has a nasty habit of going in as you do it but there you go and um, yeah so um, so here we have the the bogey um, as I said the lights in here work um, once I've finished I won't put it back together on camera but I'll try and get some footage see if this runs I haven't actually tried to see if this runs independently on its own uh, but I'll try and get some, some footage of that um, but you can then see that the bogey the plastic frames just clip 
onto the side of the, the cast section, um, which makes sense because we've already said it pivots um, so the bogey doesn't have to. But if I unclip this now, it's, what we'll find is that what comes away is just a little plastic holder on, focus. Um, with the wheels in it, pickup strips, and you can see that the wheels, the, the, the axles have essentially a um, gear uh, moulded into the axle. Um, and the motor is in here, so again it's a bit tricky to see, but you've got the motor running across the middle here, you've got a um, worm gear underneath, um, there's a there's a there's a gear in the center that runs on the worm gear which has then obviously got some kind of shaft and, and gear through and then on this side if I hold it sideways it's slightly easy to see there is a gear here and a gear here which drive the wheels um, so I haven't tried taking this apart any further because um, I can already tell it's not going to really be useful for for me uh, for modeling in in 009 I mean this thing in comparison to the bogies from the Portram is huge um, so even if this is even if this works completely self-contained if I wanted to put it inside um, another model the chances are I'd probably have to mill some of this off and you can see it's obviously in two pieces um, so that it can be kind of clipped together um, with all the electronics I assume there's a control board hiding under this uh, this blue piece but as I say I don't really want to risk taking it apart anymore so I can try and um, try and sell this one on um, I mean it might be useful for where you want a slightly bigger model so something like 09 where you've got seven millimeters to the foot running on nine millimeter gauge track but you'd still need to take this apart further probably because you probably wouldn't want the lights um, again this cast back piece might not be great but also then the wheelbase might not be um, what you want I mean the wheelbase is pretty much the same as a in fact I think it's almost identical to the to the paw tram but it um, as I say it's not going to be a um, particularly good um, alternative so I think as a, as a review the model itself is lovely uh, I mean the detailing and things on the, on the tram uh, you know if you want a much cheaper engage tram that you can detail um, than buying a, a paw tram or, or send tram model um, then definitely these are these are really good value for money I think um, but um, if you were looking at buying them for um, use in um, in 009 and using the bogies then they're a bit of a dead end I think um, I mean I'm sure somebody will come along and find a find a use for one um, I might keep it for a little bit see if I can think of one but at the moment as I say I can't think of a I can't think of a good use for this it's just it's too odd a shape um, with the lights and everything cast in. I, as I said, I'd have to, uh, I'd, I'd probably have to to do something kind of drastic to this to make it make it usable, um, which is a shame um, because again, a, a unit you know this small um, at the price um, would be fantastic. But it looks like we're going to have to keep keep using the trams and centrams for now. Um, and just factor that cost in when when designing models. I mean, you can pick them up on eBay. As I say, the the the, the two I've currently got, the two spares I've currently got, were picked up um, for for I think I paid I paid just short just short of seventy pounds. I think so uh, with postage. So that makes each of these about thirty five pounds. Um, they required a little bit of effort to to work one of them the tight the wheels on one of them seem a bit grotty that don't necessarily come clean but it runs um runs perfectly um new they can be anything up to like 140 pounds um buying uk stock i've seen prices that high so uh, it is worth looking out on ebay for kind of second hand ones um as long as you're careful about them you know being a good runner or are willing to take the punt on a on a you know repairs spares um listing um, but yeah, it, it's a shame that this wasn't um, wasn't a replacement for the K for the Partridge and Centram. It would have been it would have been good to have another another chassis we can use in 09. Um, but that's that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but uh, you know, ten out of ten for Kato for another model. I mean, it's 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 nicely designed, goes together well. As I say, it's got nice weight to it, which is good in something this small, really, um, for for aiding with the pickups. So yeah, a nice model. Um, just not what I need, unfortunately.
so I just thought I'd um, add a little bit to the end. Um, so I've got my test track out. This is actually nine millimeter and fourteen millimeter gauge. It's the piece of track I had around, um, and just to show that the units on their own um, do run nicely just on their own. There's no um, there's, so all the control is contained within this. So if this size is something that's um, that you think you could make use of, um, then definitely it's it's you know it's the way to go. Um, you don't have to worry about all the the rest of the tram. It will run just as it just as it is. Uh, but again, for me, um, it's it's not going to replace the the tiny uh, poor tram chassis anytime soon. Okay, I know we're on the second, and still there's more stuff. Um, but I decided I'd take the risk and um, try and pop the blue plastic um, seats out and have a look at exactly what's inside to see if you could work out exactly what you might be able to remove if you were willing to mill the the block down um, so you can see that um, motor is held in a plastic slot so it might actually come out reasonably easily to be able to uh, mill the block down without getting junk in the motor um, there is a small control board um, that's going to be doing the the step down of power from the 12 volts because I'm guessing this is a three volt motor. Um, it one of the reasons I guess it's nice smooth running is there's a flywheel cast to the worm as part of the worm gear. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean you can obviously remove this whole piece by the looks of it. It doesn't look like there's anything much there, but again you'd have to be careful about exactly where this connects on. As I said, I don't know quite how these pieces um, join together. There's obviously a a joint um, almost looks like it's kind of split split frame um, chassis in fact it must be because of where the pickups go um, so yeah so again that would be that would be another issue you'd have to deal with I guess that's why the motor is insulated in this plastic block uh, but my guess is that the power board is picking up directly from the two halves of the of the of the chassis um, and then that obviously then transfers the power to these two pins um, so there'll be all sorts of weird things you might have to deal with if you tried to cut this down further. Um, so I think, as I said, uh, as I said before, I think it's a, it's probably a no go for, um, for any kind of modelling use really. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure somebody will prove me wrong, um, and I'm sure somebody might be able to tell me why the motor appears to be on an angle rather than straight. And it was like that when I popped the top off. So I think, looking at it, I think the plastic's pushed in that way. Um, I don't know whether that's just for space reasons or something else. It's 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 odd. Anyway, um, yeah, there we go. That's as far as I'm willing to tear this one down. As I say, I don't want to. I don't want to keep it. I don't want to use it. Um, so I'm going to put this carefully back together now, um, and then see if I can get at least uh, some of the cost back, um, selling it on to somebody who does want a, a nice red uh, Kato tram, which I'm sure they will. Um, Thoroughly enjoy, as I say, it's a it's a really nice model if you want it as a model of a tram, uh, but not much use for modelers, I don't think. But please, if somebody proves me wrong and does something with it, then leave a comment, show us a video, show us something working. Um, it'd be great to see uh, another another bogey that can, another power unit that can be used for something. This this I promise is the final the final bit. There's no more.